What's up everyone, Burroughs Point here, and I wanted to give a quick three month impression review of ownership of a 2004 BMW 1200 CLC. Stay tuned. Okay, so in February of this year, I bought a 2004 BMW CLC 1200 or 1200 CLC. Anyhow, this bike was something that I had found uh, just in my internet travels and decided that this would be a good bike for me to own. I've been uh, very curious about the BMW Boxer engine and had heard so much about it through different forums and different avenues that I really wanted to try to give something like this a try and figure out you know what it was like to own this ride this etc um, I had been somewhat familiar with similar engines I ha had owned a um, a Honda ST 1300 previously so these types of engines aren't necessarily foreign to me Scoured the internet and found one at a very reasonable price. The guy who owned this bike previously, um, he was having some health problems and needed to sell. Um, nothing wrong with the bike, he just hadn't ridden it in a while and just was trying to get out from under the motorcycle. So I bought the bike and I've been riding it um, a lot, basically trying to get to know the bike. Uh, this bike I specifically took on my veterans uh, suicide awareness ride when I rode from the very top of Alabama all the way to the very bottom of Alabama. I also uh, has, have ridden this bike back and forth between uh, Alexander City and Tuscaloosa a couple times. And so I've gotten quite a few miles on the bike. Also, I recently took this bike to uh, Telco Plains and rode the Tail of the Dragon and Cherahal Skyway on this motorcycle. So I've put a few miles on it and definitely have had enough, I suppose, of time of ownership to be able to speak intelligently on at least some aspects of this motorcycle. I want to give a shout out to those guys over at chromeheads.com. Whether you guys know it or not, I've been stalking this website and getting a lot of information about this uh, BMW motorcycle. And if it wasn't for the contributors over on that website, I'd be trying to figure some stuff out on my own. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the information. Uh, you probably, you know, if you're a contributor on that website, you've probably helped me, especially if you're pushing out information on the 1200 CLC. Um, you've probably helped me and not even realized it. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. When BMW decided to go off into the bagger category, you know, this was one of their first forays off into the bagger category. And they set the size engine at about 1200 cc's. In the new version, after BMW stopped making the 1200 CLC, in the new version of the bagger that BMW is trying to bring onto the market, they went to 1800 cc's in the R18 in a full dress bagger. So that kind of tells you a little bit about the lessons that they learned from the, the 1200 CLC in development for the R18, specifically engine size. So the engine on this bike is probably smaller than what it needs to be, quite honestly. Uh, the bike doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily begging for power. Um, it does have a good little bit of torque. However, it, the engine, in my opinion, is not big enough to pull uh, a fully loaded bike and a person and you know all the accoutrements if you're going on a long trip um, and you're probably you know you're looking to pull some mountains or some hills then expect to run that throttle all you know wide open in order to uh, to get to the highway speeds or do whatever you need to do so it's definitely a little bit lacking in the power department where this bike makes up for that is in its agility. Again, I just took this bike over to the tail of the dragon over in Tennessee, North Carolina area and rode up and down the tail a couple times. And I'll tell you, this is a nimble little bike. When you're backing it, 
you know, out of a parking spot or you're maneuvering it. It's not nearly as heavy as my, say, Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. It's a lot lighter than that. So it's a little bit easier to handle. So, you know, it is a little bit smaller than the Vulcan Voyager, but you know, again, it's a little bit more agile. It doesn't produce as much power, but it's a lot less heavy and can maneuver it a little bit better. So for that, I am thankful. All in all, it's a little bit, the engine's a little bit on the weaker side. You definitely have to twist it a little bit more to get the power response that you want. Um, but overall, if you're okay with that, rideability issues are, are pretty good. It's a, like I said, it's a nimble bike. If you are used to V-twins and you are kind, you really want that oomph, that wow factor when you're riding at the loud pipes, etc. this is not the bike for you. This is going to be more akin to a Goldwing uh, versus, you know, a V-twin 45 degree engine. There are stark differences with this boxer engine. So not to say you don't get some engine and some vibration and all that stuff because you do, especially in this boxer engine, but um, it's not gonna be the V-twin experience that you are possibly used to, so know that going in. That's something that I didn't think about when I bought the bike, but kind of had realized as I was riding it, the, uh, the experience while you're riding it is a lot different as well, specifically because of that, the difference in the engine types and then, uh, or the engine types, and what you're used to maybe feeling or the th responses that you're used to getting out of a v-twin engine the other thing is it is a smaller bike than most full dress baggers so um and touring motorcycles so no kind of going into it if you're going to go uh, on a long trip or you're trying to ride two up on a short trip uh, the amount of cargo space you have available to you in the saddlebags and in the top case is limited um, like I said, my Vulcan Voyager is way bigger, it has a whole bunch more cargo space than this, uh, than my CLC, my 1200 CLC has. So um, I just went on a long trip, like I said, up to North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, and I found myself being very, very limited on cargo space and I actually had to buy another bag to strap to my cargo rack in order to fit all my stuff. So know that the size of the bike, um, the amount of cargo that you can carry is also a little bit smaller than maybe some of the large uh, V-twins that you've been, you may be uh, used to riding. With all of these other things though, this bike does make it up in the fuel, de uh, fuel department. Uh, this, the gas, I don't have an exact MPG, but this bike does burn. I feel less gas than my Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager does. So there is that. There is a little bit of gas savings there, um, but that's really kind of one of the few upsides co in comparison to some of the other larger baggers that I've had or that I've experienced. So all in all, um, I enjoy riding the bike. It's a great bike. Second is going to be the features. Features on this bike, there are some things that were ahead of its time. I have heated seats, heated grips, uh, AM, FM radio, all these types of things. So this thing is tricked out. Also have a cruise control. Um, interesting thing is when the cruise control on this thing, it's like a mechanical at the grip. So the grip actually moves to keep the, uh, the cruise control going or to keep the speed. So you kind of have to keep your hand off of that. Um, but other than that, this bike was ahead of its time, had a lot of features on it that were probably really nice features to have back in 2004 that we kind of take advantage or take for granted today. Um, but there's, there's no lack of amenities on this motorcycle. So that's probably one of the major advantages as well. Third thing about this motorcycle that was really attractive to me when I bought it was the price point. You can, these bikes are hard to find. Uh, they are more rare than they are common. But um, if you are able to find one, the demand for them is not so much so that you can't get into one for a decent price. So expect to pay somewhere between five and $7,000, maybe less if it's in you know not so great condition. Um, 
maybe spent, plan to spend around $5,000 for this motorcycle. That's about what I paid for mine. And it's, uh, it was a very good, uh, very good bike. This one was low miles. You might be able to find one for less with more miles. So, uh, but those are going to be real hard to find. So just scour a little bit. The right one will come along. If you're really set on a 1200 CLC, the right one will come along at some point. So all in all, um, I guess at the end of the day, I still enjoy riding this motorcycle. It is a different experience than my Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. You know, it, it's kind of one of those things that I know I'm not getting the V-twin rumble. I know it's a different, different rider experience. It's meant to be that way. Um, will I keep this bike forever? Maybe, maybe not. Not entirely sure. Um, I definitely do favor a V-twin engine more so than the Boxer engine. And I think I've learned that as I've ridden this motorcycle. Um, nothing against it. I just, I've never owned one like this before. So the owning this motorcycle and kind of riding it and get to getting to know it, I'm learning more about what my preferences are. And um, although this fun, the bike is fun, no doubt about that. It will go, it will run forever. Like I said, I've ridden it uh, up to North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee and back. Um, you know, it will go, no doubt about that. But, uh, like I said, it's a completely different experience and may not be something that you're used to. So if you have access to a bike with a boxer engine and you're looking for something like this and you're not sure that this would be something that you would like in the long run, take advantage of that because it is, it's different. It absolutely is. But overall, I, I like the bike. I own the bike. Will I ride it again? Absolutely. Um, you know, I kind of switch back and forth between the two bikes that I own. So. Um, like I said, will I own this one forever? Probably not, but you know, that's how life goes. You, you buy and sell bikes and you kind of change your preferences out or you kind of change the different options out so you can learn your preferences and life moves on. Anyhow, that's all I got for this. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about my 1200 CLC, post them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. And uh, as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.